Natural anti-aging tips. We've all had it happen. We're sitting on the couch, watching a movie, and we suddenly realize that our favorite Hollywood personality is suddenly looking old. Really old. Wrinkled skin, receding hairline, chunky face, crinkled eyes, puckered lips, that works. How on earth did that aging happen, and more importantly, how did it happen so fast, then suddenly, it hits you. You're not immune either. The last few times you looked in the mirror you notice a few extra creases around your eyes, a certain dryness to the tiny wrinkles around your mouth, and a definite sagging in your chest and waistline. The scary fact is this, something out there is causing you to age faster and putting you at risk to look far less than graceful as you age. So what is this aging enemy, and what can you do about it? Before we begin, please allow me to clarify one important thing, although there are certainly side benefits, the solutions I present below are not specifically for you to live longer or not get Alzheimer's as you age. While these goals are important and relevant, they're not today's topic. Instead this article focuses with laser-like precision on the exact steps that will keep you looking sexy as hell when you age. Clear? Okay, here we go. Let's begin with the villain that is responsible for the way that you look when you age. This villain is the single greatest cause of making you look bad as you age, and incidentally, age-related diseases such as heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, arthritis, cancer, diminished mental performance, chronic fatigue, and loss of muscle. The villain takes over your body when you are eating sugar. Exposed to environmental pollutants, chemicals and toxins. Have a weakened immune system due to a compromised gut. Excessively exposed to ultraviolet light. Experience rapid hormonal changes such as loss of testosterone or surges in estrogen. Stressed out and low on sleep. You may have already guessed what the villain is. It's inflammation. As you may know, inflammation is good, to a certain extent. It serves as protection against invaders and traumatic damage. To take a simple scenario of how inflammation can be good, suppose a dog bites you on your arm. After that bite occurs, the inflammatory response begins. First, coagulation factors promote clotting in order to stop bleeding and prevent germs from spreading from the wound side on your arm to the rest of your body. Next, phagocytes surge out of the bloodstream and into the affected tissue to swallow and destroy pathogens, at the same time engulfing bacteria and secreting cytokines, which are messenger proteins that send out a call for more emergency responders, such as interleukin, IL-6, tumor necrosis factor, and C-reactive protein, CRP, all of which can mark bacteria for destruction. The phagocytes also generate reactive oxygen species, aka free radicals, which are extremely unstable compounds that can chew up bacteria as well as damaged human tissue. If you've been bitten by a dog on your arm and need to protect the rest of your body and heal that wound as fast as possible, then this kind of inflammatory response is fantastic. But this same inflammation response can kick in even when there's no invader. Take, for example, atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries. When fatty deposits build up on the walls of your arteries, one type of phagocyte, called a macrophage, identifies those growing lesions as potentially troublesome and infiltrates them with inflammation, which causes swelling and destabilization of those deposits. The lesions can then break open, which results in the formation of a blood clot that can clog blood vessels and cause heart attacks. This is why getting a test of CRP, an emergency responder associated with inflammation, can indicate your heart attack risk. And there are other examples of bad inflammation. Take Alzheimer's for instance, in which the areas of the human brain clogged with plaques are full of inflammatory cells and cytokines. Or diabetes, in which inflammation and insulin resistance are positively correlated, and the same type of drugs that help to restore insulin sensitivity also reduce inflammatory factors like IL-6 and CRP. Inflammatory activity even breaks down skeletal muscle, leading to the loss of lean muscle mass, and incidentally, being fat makes this problem worse, since excess fat cells can churn out more inflammation. 
you don't have to have atherosclerosis, Alzheimer's, diabetes or dogs chasing you around the neighborhood to have a problem with inflammation. Chronic long-term inflammation can simply simmer in the background over years and decades as very small amounts of damage accumulate. And yes, inflammation can even affect your skin and gives you wrinkles. If you look at skin under a microscope, skin that shows no clinical signs of aging shows no inflammation. While the inflammatory events I described above are designed to help neutralize or inhibit potentially harmful microorganisms, the free radicals produced by the inflammation can also lead to the breakdown of collagen and the structure of your skin, resulting in fine lines, skin thinning, decreased quality of wound repair, and an increased susceptibility to skin wounds that fail to heal. When these problems occur due to chronic inflammation from internal factors, like an inflammatory diet, this type of skin aging is termed intrinsic aging and looks like this anti-aging. The scenario above could be created through eating too much sugar, too many high glycemic index carbohydrates, stress, lack of sleep, processed foods, chemical or toxin exposure, low protein intake, low fat intake, low vegetable intake, not drinking enough water and too much exercise. You can easily produce the same type of inflammatory response from an external stimulus, such as spending way too much time in tanning booths or under the hot sun. In this case, chronic low-level inflammation is established as a way to shield the skin against UV rays, and the inflammatory response results in production of enzymes called metalloproteinases which break down the skin matrix, cause the skin to sag and wrinkle. At the same time, the normal production of collagen is inhibited, while elastin is stimulated, which causes skin to rapidly age. This type of externally stimulated aging mechanism is shown below, anti-aging. This scenario could be creating by exposure to environmental pollutants, excessive sun exposure, tanning booths, or swimming in heavily chlorinated water. Now that you know what causes aging, you probably have a hunch about why people are aging faster. The primary reasons include pollution, processed foods, low fat intake, inadequate protein, dehydration, high stress lifestyle, lack of sleep, chemicals in personal hygiene products and household cleaning supplies. So what can you do about it? Here are my top 5 natural anti-aging tips with my goal to make these extremely practical and immediately implementable for you. 1. Use anti-inflammatory spices and use them regularly. Spices are chock full of natural anti-inflammatory compounds. My two favorites are turmeric and cayenne. I like these too because you can put them on just about anything and for me, that's typically my lunchtime salad and any dinner that suits, including beef, chicken or fish. Buy them, put them on the counter, and if you just can't stand the taste, then use a potent curcumin extract capsule like phenacane, just take 4 to 8 capsules per day. 2. Eat an anti-inflammatory diet. This is one of the easiest ways to reverse the aging process in inflamed skin and basically involves consuming 1. Lots of brightly colored vegetables, such as red, orange and 